Welcome back everyone. This will be episode number nine of Learning Motion Control and IO with PLCs. On this episode we're going to talk specifically about MC move velocity. Uh, it's a pretty similar to move jogging uh, or MC jogging but we're going to take it a little bit further and uh, actually bring some extra IO in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish in our program we need a few extra function blocks. So I've written those offline already. I'm going to plop them in here. These function blocks are MC move velocity, MC stop, which will be how we actually stop velocity that's in motion, and just a placeholder variable to hold our, our velocity so we can play around with it while we're uh, uh, trying to get the drive up to speed and stuff like that. So keep in mind, we still haven't set any scaling or anything, so this number of velocity is, it's not millimeters or second, it's not RPM necessarily, we don't really know what it is, but that's okay, we don't need to focus on that too much right now. Okay, so let's start out by giving current velocity a value. We'll call it a thousand units since we don't really have any kind of real units on there yet. After that, let's come down here and instead of going to state 30 where we were waiting on a jog command, um, let's see here, we'll just put this in here, jog command, let's start a new state, 40. Wait for velocity command. And in here, I'm going to paste a little bit of code that I wrote offline. And so we have our instance of MC move velocity that we made earlier, the axis reference that we're used to already. We have a velocity set to our value uh, that we just created. Acceleration, I just set these by trial and error when I was uh, kind of dry running this episode. It's something that's pretty quick, but you know, not going to jerk the drive around or anything like that. So. Speaking of jerk, that is the change in acceleration limitation. Uh, we don't actually want to limit that, so I just put this at a pretty big number. You could put it at you know 50 million or something like that, but you don't really want a jerk limit in this, or we don't at the moment. So I'll probably talk about jerk and acceleration velocity and uh, stuff like that in a later episode. Uh, direction, we have this uh, enumeration here called MC direction, and if you just type MC direction dot, you get the directions you can get. So we'll go in the positive direction, and for execute, let's go ahead and use our procs. That way we can turn it on and off. So this should work, but with the exception of it's only going to work once because this velocity only executes on the rising edge of the execute. So we could flick it on and off, but the other thing that's going to do is once it comes on, it's never going to stop. So we actually need to add in some code to make it stop properly. So I'm going to plop in a little bit more code here at the bottom that I wrote offline. And that says if we stop holding our procs, uh, which is just our digital input, we're using as a switch right now. So uh, if not procs, then let's call velocity false. So these function blocks like to have themselves called false or else they don't see the rising edge of execute here. So as we're leaving this state, state 40, and jump over to 900, we're going to uh, come down here, which actually I left this code in here from earlier, but this is our new stop section, MC stop, we give it the access reference, and we just execute true right when we get into the state. So then if we see the procs come back on, we will MC stop false, which just really preps it for next time. We've already done the stop up here on line 53, and then we jump back to state 40. And so at that point, we're going to see a fresh rising edge of, of procs, which we already know it's going to be on from down here. So it should feed it in at the current velocity command. Keep in mind that there's a whole lot of different ways you could program this, and we're just doing something that works and is pretty simple. So um, hopefully I do it in a way that's easy to understand. So let's go ahead and give this a shot and see if we can make the servo spin. Since we haven't actually modified any I.O., we don't really need to do an activate, so I can just do an online change, pop right in here. Okay, and just like MC Jog, when I activate the procs, we should see the motor spin. Looks like it's working. Alright, let's find a way to make this a little bit more interesting. I remembered that we had this EL3255 potentiometer slice and decided to go looking for potentiometers in the house. Uh, I had a little trouble finding any, but I remembered that I do have this driving simulator with a set of pedals that connects up through a DB9. So I put some uh, a voltmeter on the pins and found which, which one was the throttle pedal 
and I just wired that throttle, the two pins, into the EO3255 and uh, I just used some random value resistor in there and we'll see if we can get it to work. Okay, so let's do that. First we need some I.O. to talk to. Uh, I put pasted in this throttle here and that's a percent I star because it's an input that we're going to address by linking with the system manager and the data types an integer. You can tell that by going to the slice itself and looking at the value here and clicking on the variable tab you can see size 2.0 bytes and its type is an integer so as long as we match that in the PLC we should be good to go you don't have to match it but there is a filter that filters by data type so it's best if you just match it you can check the online tab here and we see that right now we have 29,787 counts and I believe that's the voltage here on the right side 9.09 .09 volts it's a it's a 0 to 10 volt system that it supplies so as I press on the throttle carefully you can see it's dropping down here as soon as it gets behind out from behind this number and it came back up and I'll just do some quick ones to make sure we got good data so we can see that it's going from almost 30,000 counts down to almost 22,000 counts so we've got somewhere around like seven or eight thousand counts to work with which should be plenty of resolution for what we're dealing with so if we just go up and build the project right now as soon as it's finished we should be able to link in that variable so we'll go back to our value here. We're waiting on it to finish. Now we can right click, change link. And there's all this stuff at the top. That's all your NC stuff because it happens to share the same size data type. So let's get rid of all that. And you'll see main.throttles right there. So we link it, save everything, activate the configuration, and we'll make sure that value made it to the PLC. Okay, back in the PLC after activation, I'm going to log in, run the PLC, and you can see my throttle is here. Okay, so we need a little bit more code because we haven't done anything yet. We still have current velocity set there. So rather than setting it directly to throttle, I'm going to use this function that I created a while back for a different project called map. And it's a one-to-one, -one, basically a one-to-one -one copy of the Arduino map function that just scales from an in min in max to an out min out max and it just returns that value so uh, I'll put this code online so you don't need to worry about that just look in the comments below um, and I'll put my github to this uh, what, what the final version of this code ends up being and it'll contain that function if you want to use it so here we need to go ahead and put a map in and the map will be throttle as an input which is our raw value and then I looked at the value of wide open throttle and well rather wide open which would be pushed all the way down is 22,600 no throttle 29,800 100 is kind of the minimum speed of the motor I want to see and 2800 is the maximum actually I'm going to change this down to uh, to zero just so we can make sure we get a good uh, stopped motor with no throttle we'll see how that works out so I'm gonna save that and the other stuff we need to do down here we are feeding this in, but the difference is at the moment it would take a prox uh, change in state and then that would stop our motor. So we don't want to do prox. We want to make sure we have the prox on still, but we can add in another smidgen of code here that will say if the last throttle is e not equal to the throttle. So did the throttle change? But since we never did that, we need to keep track of that and we'll say down here every scan so it'll come through and it'll say the new throttle value equals the last throttle value. And here, if it changes in that two milliseconds that it comes back through, then it's going to send a new rising edge and we will uh, get the velocity in here. So, well, the second time or the first time it comes through, it'll be false because it won't be equal. And then the next time through, it will be. So after two milliseconds, we'll respond to that change. So I think that should work. Let's go ahead and log uh, or log in compile that code, get it on the PLC, and find out if it's going to work. All right, let's just do a quick check here. Current velocity command, two, three, and 2400. It might be nice to come in here and just say if current velocity command, come on, come on, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Bring it back. Why are you crashing? Why are you crashing? 
Stop crashing. Stop. Okay, we're back. If velocity command is less than, say, 10 or even like 50, then that equals zero. And that'll just keep, you have a little dead zone to our pedal. Alright, let's see if that looks better. Okay, very little throttle on up, boom, hits 50, and then we go. Looks good to me. Let's check it out on the real deal. Alright guys, so I had some pretty poor throttle response there, and I think I know why. I kind of messed up here trying to get clever, and in my experience, clever is usually a bad thing. So, when last throttle and throttle are not equal, like when I'm pushing on the throttle, it's actually flickering this. So every time it stays equal for one scan, it's good, and it begins executing this, and then as soon as it starts to change again, it pulls the rug out from under it and says no longer execute anymore. So, you have to hold it still for it to actually update, and that's no good for a throttle, but... That's, that's okay, I'm not going to fix it right now, but just know that this is not the most clean way to do it. You'll see a much better implementation of this when I get to uh, MC Absolute and MC uh, Relative Moves. Anyway, that's it. Just don't do it quite like this. Do it more like I do the next ones, and uh, I'll see you on the next videos.